This is the iPhone 15 Pro. It looks very similar to the past few generations with some notable changes to the materials, welcome pro features, a new button, and one long overdue port switch. This is gonna be a complete overview of the iPhone 15 Pro and my first impressions of the latest and greatest tech from Apple. Heyo, what's going on everyone? Nathan here. So let's just get right into this video. So I pre-ordered my 15 Pro on the first day that I was able to. And as you can see from here, I went with the blue titanium colorway. I was actually super torn between this and the natural titanium, but blue is definitely my color, as you can definitely tell from all my other videos. And I just had to go with my gut and I decided to end up going with this. So this phone does also come in black and white titanium, but I'm actually very pleased with this blue color. It's very subtle and dark and at certain ends, angles and lighting scenarios that almost looks black or like the midnight color on the newest MacBook Air. And at others, you can really see the blue shine through and it looks beautiful. And one little tiny detail that I absolutely love with this is when light refracts through the glass camera bump because it's not misted over and it'll actually show the light through the edge and it just makes the blue shimmer right through and it looks absolutely gorgeous. And one thing that I love about this colorway. So yes, you did hear me say that, but the new iPhones are made out of titanium and this is probably one of the biggest changes to this model. It has a nice brushed metal finish along the sides, frosted back, and the edges are ever so slightly rounded so it doesn't feel quite as sharp to hold in your hand. This titanium also makes the iPhone lighter compared to previous models, dropping it from 206 grams from the 14 Pro down to 187 grams in this phone. And also with this material change, I think we have to address the elephant in the room, but there have been a lot of videos that this back and this material cracks a lot easier than the previous generations. I'm not too sure why and for those reasons I'm probably always gonna rock this with the case because I definitely don't want this to break anytime soon but just something to keep in mind it appears that this material does crack easier if you were to drop your phone compared to like the 14 or 13 Pro. The size of this iPhone is also ever so slightly different. It's about one millimeter shorter in height than the 14 Pro and also about a half a millimeter thicker. But this change in height doesn't affect the display at all. Instead, it actually shortens the bezels around the display so the display comes closer to the edges compared to previous models. Speaking of the display, this has the same one as last year with a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display. So it's just as gorgeous with the same 460 pixels per inch. The Pro model also still remains to be the only version of the iPhone you can get with their ProMotion technology with adaptive refresh rates up to 120 hertz. So scrolling through the phone and just swiping around feel buttery smooth. And there have also not been any improvements to the brightness of the display over the previous generation. So you still get the same 1000 nits max brightness, 1600 nits peak brightness with HDR display, and you can get up to 2000 nits in broad daylight. So personally new to me for this phone, and I know are technically a year old now, but that's the dynamic island and always on display. The always on display is fine. I have it set so it shows me the time and my widgets, but I actually really, really like the dynamic island. I'm still getting used to all the different features such as playing music, timers, GPS, and I absolutely love when you get a phone call and you and the other person are talking. It actually shows the waveforms of both the other person and you talking at separate times. There's just a whole bunch of like little cool things and I'm still finding like different applications that actually work with it. And overall, I didn't think I would like it as much. I thought it was kind of gimmicky, but now after using it, the dynamic island is actually really, really sick. So another much needed improvement to this phone that Apple finally decided to add in is they dropped the lightning cable and finally went with USB-C. I wasn't sure if they would actually do this or just go completely portless with this model, but it's here finally. And in classic Apple fashion, about eight years or so too late for something so simple as this, but at least we finally have it now. Apple includes a braided USB-C cable in the box and I would have loved to have it match the color of the phone since we know they can do that. But now you can travel with one less cable and you can also get transfer data speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, which I know isn't great, but at least now it's something compared to the lightning cable. And so the last physical change Apple made to the 15 Pro is that there's now an action button where the mute switch used to be. This is a customizable button where you can set it to do almost anything on your iPhone. The default choices Apple gives you are silent, turn on or off focus modes, activate the camera, flashlight, you can open the magnifier, or my personal favorite, you can set it to command a shortcut, which means you can pretty much make it do anything just by setting up a shortcut 
shortcut for that action. It's very simple and quick to set up a shortcut and now you can have this open up any application on your phone or have it do a specific thing within an application. I currently have mine set to open Spotify because I'm always listening to music, but since I have this app in my home doc, I think I might switch it out to a specific conversation within my messages. We'll have to see, but overall, I really like the addition of the action button, and if you just didn't want to change up because you're so used to it, then you could just keep this as set to your silent switch, so it'd be like nothing ever changed if you just don't want to lose that functionality. I just hope in a future update, Apple allows this action button to have multiple different settings at once, so like if you were to double press it or triple press it, each of them would do a different action. I think they're missing out on an opportunity there, and that'd be definitely a cool feature for them to add, but for right now, the action button is definitely a welcome feature from me. So moving over to the internals, the iPhone 15 Pro now has the new A17 Pro chip inside, which consists of a six core CPU, that's two performance cores and four efficiency cores. It also has a six core GPU and a new 16 core neural engine. This is actually their first three millimeter chip and its capabilities are almost reaching M1 levels of processing power. If you've ever owned an iPhone before, then you know just how smooth and fluid these devices function on a day-to-day -day basis. Basis. This will never skip a beat on you while you're pretty much doing anything on your iPhone and it can handle some of the most graphic intensive games out there. So the cameras also got upgraded this year, which I'm sure you could have guessed because it seems to be just a yearly thing and one of their biggest selling points. But this year in particular, I think Apple made some really, really good improvements for professional users and also camera enthusiasts. This has the same triple camera setup you have come to know from the pro models. The main camera is now 48 megapixels with a 24 millimeter lens. The ultra wide is now 12 megapixels at 13 millimeters. And the telephoto lens is also 12 megapixels, but on this you can choose between a two times or three times zoom. This camera setup is definitely a top two or three smartphone cameras on the market today in 2023. They have great dynamic range and sharpness across the board. The larger 48 megapixel sensor allows you to get better low light photos than before. But where Apple really introduced the most exciting pro features with this phone is with its video features. Even with nothing adjusted, the base camera can give you some of the best video you can get out of any smartphone. It has great dynamic range, awesome autofocus, and its stabilization is top tier as well. And probably the feature that I'm most excited for with this camera now is that you can now film in a log profile. So if you don't even know what log is, then that probably doesn't mean much to you. But if you do know what log is, then you know just how awesome that is. This will give your videos so much more information with that flat color profile. So you can have pinpoint control over editing this footage in post-production. So I'm definitely going to get you more more photos and videos and a whole bunch of different scenarios for my full review of this phone. But for now and what I've gotten with this so far, I'm really liking these upgrades to the iPhone 15 Pro, especially coming from the 13 Pro. So moving on to the battery life of this phone, it's been overall solid for me. So to be honest, I really don't notice like much of an improvement over my 13 Pro, even with the slightly larger battery capacity in this phone. And I'm not saying that it's gotten worse. It's rated to get 23 hours of video playback. And unfortunately, this still only has 20 watts of fast charging. So in about 30 minutes, you can get 50% recharge on this phone, which in 2023 standards is definitely not great by any means necessary, but the battery life for me overall has been very good so far. And just in case you're wondering, here's a list of some other important features you still get with this phone that I didn't specifically mention in this overview. So don't worry, they didn't remove them. So that's gonna wrap up this overview of the iPhone 15 Pro. As you all probably know by now, I'm a huge Apple fanboy and missing out on the 14 was really difficult, but I know that this is gonna be a great phone from anyone out there who's gonna upgrade from, I would say about the 13 series or below. If you're at the 14 series, then this probably isn't worth the premium asking price because you're not getting like that much worth for your money going from the 14 to the 15. But again, 13s and lower, I definitely recommend this or the regular iPhone 15 series phone. So depending on when you're watching this video, if I've already posted my extended review of this, then I'll link it here on the screen for you to check out to see what I think about it a couple months down the line and after really, really using it and putting it to the test. But that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe. And as always, have a great day, everyone. Cheers.